I have great news. But first, how to survey Sumati and Narian. Take off, go to Sumati, scan the surface for resources, land at the mining outpost, travel to the outpost, say hi to the locals, arrive, talk to this lady, go to this cave, find this guy, walk back to the outpost, kill. Oh, 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 oh. Go back to the outpost, say bye to our new friends. Leave. Go somewhere new. Go find a new outpost, be sure to scan stuff. Talk to this lady. Put down sensors and scan more stuff. Say bye to our new friends. Scan some more- Wait. No. Wait, did it- did it crash? Mother- Back to the show. We are gonna hit 100 subscribers. I'm very excited for this. Currently we're sitting at 99. Uh, it is... February 18th, 2024. I didn't think I'd get this far in, well, especially not as quickly as we have. It's been less than three months, which is very, very impressive. And I'm very, uh, very thankful for that. I have a goal in mind in doing this. I would be incredibly proud of hitting 1,000 subscribers. Maybe not even proud. I would be, it would be cool and fulfilling to have hit 1,000 subscribers. Cheddar cheese. That'll go at C. There's better cheese. Cocktail skewer. That'll go at D. Never get much use out of them. Scotch tape. That's gonna go at B. Just because you use it and you never really expect to need it. So it's always good to have around. Uh, soul ring from Magic the Gathering. I'd put it at S, but it makes you a target, so it's going at A. Battery. Double A. Are there cooler batteries? Nine volts are way cooler. This is gonna go at C. And finally... The three-body problem is in the book, not the problem itself. Really great book. It's going at S. Back to the show. Now, there is a qualification on this, which is that I don't want those subscribers to be cheap, if that makes sense. I hope that's not, it's not being rude or anything, but I've, I've noticed that there is a big difference in the buttons that people can click on the internet. Something I actually really wanted to study, but got completely shot down by the college I went to. They were not uh, they were not as excited about this research as I was, as I wanted to figure out the kind of cost of clicking buttons on, on, you know, on screens when you visit websites. And so there are a few different buttons that we have access to on YouTube. And let's only take shorts in consideration because it's much, uh, I guess, much simpler. And one of them is not even a button. So the, the first button would normally be clicking on a video to watch it, right? But on shorts, you have to stick around for like three to four seconds, and then it counts it as a view. So that's kind of passive. That can happen on accident a lot. You know, like you're doing dishes and you scroll onto something and then, you know, you're scrubbing something for a minute. And so it plays over and over and over again and really just annoys everyone around you. <clears throat> then you have likes. So when someone clicks the like button, um, that, what that means to me is that they've liked what they've just seen. Not necessarily that they're enjoying any particular aspect of a thing. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe they really enjoyed an aspect of something, but not the whole thing. So people who click like are, are not convinced that the product that you are giving away for free is something that they would want to see twice, but what they have seen, they did enjoy it. So this could be like, we've all been to kind of diners in the middle of nowhere, especially if you live in the States, they're easy to come by. You go to, you go to somewhere, they've got a diner, you go there, it's okay, right? You like it, it's food, it doesn't taste bad or anything, but you're never gonna like drive six hours to go to just that diner. That's kind of how I see that. There are comments, which, I don't know, I wouldn't put much stock in those because even on the internet, people can be very antisocial. Uh, there can be a sort of cost to leaving comments, although they are really, really good for a video, <laughs> even the bad ones. It's always exciting when you get uh, comments that are negative or positive, because you're like, oh man, this video is going to do so much better now that people are actually talking under it. Great stuff. Um, and then subscribe. So. I've seen a lot of people talking about how the subscriber metric doesn't mean anything or doesn't mean much and it's not it's not a good metric to go by to, to, to determine like success and I think 
the number itself, right, what's going to be soon, hopefully, a hundred, that does not mean that things right now are going well. But the metric closely related to it, which is the rate of change of that subscriber count, is really, really important because this is the hardest button to get someone to click. People are very organized with the way that they consume uh, their digital entertainment. What is ostensibly, uh, for a lot of people, an addiction. When you go to your subscriber page, you want to see things that you care about and you don't want to scroll very far to get to it. It's like you're delaying the endorphins and in, in, in all the, the chemical soup that this stuff is giving you. And even just delaying it for a second is like your body does not like it. So to to click that button means to invite what might even just be subconscious suffering. So it's a it's a really, really big hurdle to clear. And it's not something that most people would ever like never really do. So it's very exciting that there are a hundred human beings who have clicked that button. Um, let me pull back up my notes because I had good notes. Well, I had a few notes. This is going to be very, very short um, because I'm way more excited about the clips for, the, for this week than, than the topic itself. Uh, the question now is what do we want to do when we hit a hundred subs? Because there's got to be some sort of celebration. The Void presents Mr. Rock. We'd now like to welcome to the stage, Mr. Rock. How do seven hens fit in a van? To get to the other side. <laughs> it's just like this one time when I was upside down in the to the show. I did one for 10 just to be, you know, joking and coy and all that. Um, so for 100, I actually do want to do something more, I guess, more rewarding for everyone. Uh, so I've come up with five, it looks like five options. You only get to pick one because, you know, I have to get this out quickly. Um, the first and easiest would be to stream on YouTube. I only stream on Twitch, but it's pretty easy to just change where I'm pointing the stream to YouTube. That would be cool. That would be cool. I think more people would actually see it if I did it that way, but that is totally up to you. I'm not nearly as entertaining live as I am in videos, and I'm not nearly as entertaining in videos as I am in shorts. So take that as you will. I spend a lot of time thinking about my words before I say them because I loathe to say something stupid. Even though I do that anyway, I say the dumbest shit possible. Uh, number two, Eclipse only show. So not Eclipse as in the thing that's gonna happen in April, but clips like um, all the cutaway bits that we do here. Just have a whole show of not me talking, but just, you know, funny clips. Uh, that would double as <laughs> me being able to just make a shit ton of shorts. I don't know how long I could make that. 10 minutes is pushing it. Who knows? A special episode in the game. So I have a list of games somewhere that I want to do. I think it's in my community tab. So we could pick one of those and I'll just make a video or stream about it. Who knows? Uh, for Q&A, right? I did a joke kind of Q&A with Mr. Rock where I had, I had ChatGBT generate a list of questions and then I fed them to the script I have to generate the Mr. Rock voice and everything, and it goes off the rails. It was a good joke, um, masquerading as a question and answer video. But we could do one for real. That's like actual questions and not w weird chat GPT questions that it thinks gonna be entertaining. Uh, and then five, I could always write another story along the lines of the Trevor Mistopoulos video, which if you're, if you're like a shorts only person, you'll not have seen. I think it's an okay story, but you know, it could always be better. I have become a much better storyteller and writer lately. Although I don't know that I can pull off the horror aspect as convincingly because, um, I don't know. I've just kind of mellowed out. Let's actually take a look. How many 
people have seen this video? Four. Oh no, that's the music. Um, five. Oh, and if we do a story, I will write music for it. See, so yeah, how much have people watched? Uh, the average view duration is four minutes, which is not the whole story. So most people don't even know how that ends. That's fun. You know what they say, Mr. Cat? Never look a gift horse in the mouth. What does that even mean? And my intro. Don't you fucking dare. And my intro. <laughs>